The following video is brought to you by Amino. Download the new Horror Amino app free for iOS and Android today to join a mobile community for horror fans. Talk about gory flicks, check out creepy pics, engage in macabre contests, and make some scary friends to discuss your gruesome passions with Horror Amino. Greetings, I'm your host, Dr. Wolfilo, with another horrifying list for your viewing consumption. First, though, let's recap the top three results of my best towns of horror poll on the Horror Amino app. Number three was Woodsboro, Ghostface's home base. Number two was Haddonfield, Michael's hometown and my top choice. Number one was Crystal Lake, Jason's little burg. I can't help but feel like this poll was more about name recognition, but okay, Crystal Lake is more popular, I guess. Let's move on to the next list. Leatherface has appeared in a lot of Texas Chainsaw Massacre flicks in different incarnations. He has changed over the years, but not that drastically. What has changed a lot over the years, though, is Leatherface's family. Leatherface always gets the attention. His loved ones should get their time to shine. Here's my list of Leatherface's top 10 family members. Number 10, Leatherface's unnamed daughter from 3. Why not start off a list of Leatherface's relatives with somebody he actually spawned? A daughter. This little girl is creepy enough, but she's not exactly wearing people's faces. No, what makes the daughter interesting is what she represents. Evidence that Leatherface has had sex. Which is not a pleasant thought, especially since Leatherface barely has a grasp on the alphabet. More disturbing is the fact that Leatherface isn't exactly married, and a mother for this girl is not present. Okay... Number 9, Tinker Sawyer from 3. Played by Joe Unger, Tinker looks a bit like a Texan pirate with his hair cut and the hook for a hand. Tinker's claim to fame is his namesake. The man makes stuff, but the standout gadget that Tinker makes is a nice custom-built chainsaw for Leatherface. Inscribed on the blade are the famous words of Drayton Sawyer. The saw is family. Family is what this list is all about. Well, looks like you just got a present for a job you didn't finish. Number 8, Darla Slaughter from Next Generation. Probably the closest thing to normal that Leatherface has ever been related to. Darla, played by Tony Perensky, is an insurance agent. An insurance agent that's in a relationship with a guy who's a member of a cannibalistic clan. Okay, maybe they aren't cannibals this time around because Darla orders pizza for everyone. Yeah. Darla is portrayed as a bit more sympathetic. She just plays along with the murder and mayhem because she doesn't have much of a choice and she's in a pretty abusive relationship with Matthew McConaughey. Still, she's got a pretty good sense of humor about the whole thing. Why do blondes stick their hands out of car window? Why? Get a refill. I don't get it. Airhead? <laughs> Number 7, Edward Tex Sawyer from 3. Played by the now famous Vigo Mortensen, Tex has a cowboy flair and, as his name suggests, a love for his home state of Texas. In fact, Tex loves his state so much that he gets pissed whenever somebody calls him by his birth name Edward. She looks to me like she might go all screamy on the city. I wish you'd call me Tex. I told you. <laughs> I'm sorry, boy. God damn it, I'm sorry. Besides this little personality quirk, Tex is relatively normal on the outside, but appearances can be deceiving. Just because you meet a friendly dude who looks like Vigo Mortensen, that doesn't mean you should trust the guy, ladies. Number 6, Alfredo Sawyer from 3. Really weird on the inside and outside, Alfredo, played by Tom Everett, is certainly a memorable member of the Sawyer family. Right off the bat meeting the guy, the dude's got one of those foggy eyes, which usually means sketchy. Alfredo runs a gas station and just seems like an eccentric living in the middle of nowhere, but he, uh, likes to peek into the restroom of his establishment. This was before Yelp. Besides the perversion, Alfredo is just a plain weirdo that has no shame, but is also, uh, <laughs> pretty funny. <laughs> so it's a very loud bang. Oh, big hole. Do I know you? Number 5, Charlie Hewitt, a.k.a. Sheriff Hoyt from the remake series. The Platinum Dunes flicks had some weirdos, sure, but they didn't really stand out much beyond maybe their appearances. Exception is Sheriff Hoyt, played by Arlie Ermey, who is basically playing his usual drill sergeant army guy, but as a psychopathic cannibal. Hoyt is the local sheriff, but he isn't really the sheriff and he isn't really Hoyt, but whatever. Hoyt is the head of the Hewitt household, and the brains of the whole cannibalism operation. 
Hoyt's chief responsibility is using his seized authority to lure folks to their doom, which should give you another reason not to trust the police in isolated locations by default. Shit, I just killed the whole fucking sheriff's department. Number 4, Vilmer Slaughter from Next Generation. No doubt Matthew McConaughey regrets this film, but Vilmer is the star's greatest role. Vilmer is difficult to describe. He's a lot like God in this regard. Basically, Vilmer is the head of the creatively named Slaughter family, and he masquerades as a tow truck driver to entrap young victims. Makes sense so far. Vilmer possesses a mechanical leg brace, for some reason. I feel like Vilmer's strange schlockiness is especially enhanced by the fact that he is played by an Academy Award winning actor. Besides that though, Vilmer murders folks because he works for the Illuminati. Okay, that's enough remembering Next Generation for one day. You don't think the FBI has its place under 24 hour surveillance? You don't think there's transmitters in all these walls? Let me ask you one question. Are you having fun here? Number three, Chop Top Sawyer from Two. The twin brother of the hitchhiker, Chop Top is played by Bill Mosley and is probably the weirdest looking of all of Leatherface's kin. In fact, Chop Top can stand on his own as a memorable character, with that plate in his head, a neat little souvenir from Nam that he just loves to use a clothes hanger to pick the skin off of and he likes to eat said skin. Scrumptious. You just better hope the guy's wearing his Sonny Bono wig if you ever meet him. Chop Top is crazy in his own interesting way as a music-loving hippie that is prone to Vietnam flashbacks, so he's not exactly the kind of weirdo you'd expect to find in Texas. Or maybe this doesn't phase you if you live in Texas. Good night. Oh, oh good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night! Good night! <laughs> Number 2, Nubbins Sawyer, aka The Hitchhiker, from the original and 2. I guess Nubbins was a draft dodger. Played by Edwin Neal, The Hitchhiker is initially just a wandering weirdo trying to make a living off of his booming photography business. If you don't pay up though, he takes it a little personally. Nubbins is revealed to be a bit more than your average weirdo. He's implied to be the one responsible for removing corpses from their resting places and making art out of them. I never thought about that before, but yeah, the hitchhiker is probably the most artistically inclined of his clan. In fact, he's probably responsible for all the other weird art in the house. Nubbins is killed, but he came back in the sequel as a puppet, which is what he probably would have wanted. I was at the slaughterhouse. I got an uncle that works at the slaughterhouse. Hey, my, my brother worked there. My, my grandfather, too. <laughs> my family's always been in me. My whole family of Dracula's. Number one, Drayton Sawyer, a.k.a. the cook from the original and two. The man in charge of the Sawyer operation, Drayton, played by the late Jim Sidow, is a businessman, a family man, a gourmet. Drayton runs a gas station slash barbecue joint and is unassuming as a cannibalistic cook. The locals just love Drayton as the eccentric old man that makes the damn good chili. They don't have any reason to believe that they're eating random motorists at all. Drayton is pretty lovable, even when he's torturing a captive victim. The cook even shows some kind of remorse. He claims that he doesn't take pleasure in killing, and that he doesn't want to kill. It's just business to him, which is a pretty fucking scary motivation to be a cannibal. I, I just can't take no pleasure in killing. <laughs> There's just some things you gotta do. Don't mean you have to like it. <laughs> Dishonorable mention, Grandpa Sawyer. Gotta at least mention Grandpa. Grandpa never speaks, as he's barely alive. He's supposedly pushing 130 by the second film. Somehow, this guy is the grandfather of Leatherface and his brothers, but that doesn't make much sense, as there is no father or mother present to link Grandpa to Leatherface. Grandpa is also the enigmatic head of the Sawyers, who got them into the murder biz in the first place, but... Not much else is known about him besides his thirst for blood, which sustains him. Take note, health nuts. So yeah, Leatherface's family are a bit weird, but maybe you disagree with the order of this list, or maybe I left someone out that you love. Well, I want to hear from you. Download the free Horror Amino app, go to the Jacques Stickman page, and vote on my top 10 relatives of Leatherface poll to decide by popular demand which Texan freak is the freakiest of them all. While you're in the app, why not get involved with the community? 
There's all kinds of weird stuff to get into on Horror Amino, like contests, and there's so much love for every kind of horror you can imagine. Check it out, people. Horror Amino is available now on iOS and Android. Whatever side of horror you're interested in, this app has got you covered. You fucking weirdos.